Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones and I am at the Texas Instrument booth and I'm talking with Jesse. So Jesse, how are you? I'm doing great, Phil. Thanks for stopping by. Well, one thing I've noticed is as I travel around the show, there's been a significant boost in performance in a lot of the projectors that are utilizing DLP or DMD imaging systems. So let's first talk about what is a, a DLP and, <laughs> yeah, sure. um, and what is its benefits over other imagers that are utilized in projectors. So um, when people think DLP, they usually think of the digital micro mirror device, mm -hmm. the DMD. This is the chip with hundreds of thousands up to millions of micro mirrors. And these chips can range in size from a extremely small 0.16 inch all the way to over an inch, the ones you find in pro AV and cinema projectors. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones you find mainly in consumer projectors range from 0.23 inches to 0.65 inches. So if you look here behind us, there's, there's a couple of examples of um, DLP projectors. So of course we have the um, Hisense LQ9, which is their flagship model. And then you also have a little compact ultra short thrower from Optima back here. Both of those utilize um, DLP chips, but they're smaller, mm -hmm. to just, which are utilized for different, different packaging. Right. right. For first thing, let's talk about something I hear all the time. The difference between native resolution and displayed resolution. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. most of the DLP chips that are utilized, or DMDs that are utilized in consumer projectors, do not have 8.8 .8 million mirrors. But how do they deliver um, on screen 4K resolution? Yeah, so uh, the vast majority of consumer 4K DLP projectors use a micro mirror array or a DMD with a resolution of uh, 1920 by 1080 micro mirrors mm -hmm. or 1080p mm -hmm. and then with optical pixel shifting mm -hmm. reach 8.3 million pixels on the screen mm -hmm. so we do this because um, first of all the cost to make a native 4k DMD would, would be, be high prohibitive to the consumer market mm -hmm. there are those and mm -hmm. they're used in theaters mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go to your Dolby Cinema, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can you can see native 4K, mm -hmm. but um, those projectors just are would would be out of the realm of the consumer projector market. So, what we, do, we we utilize the speed of the micro mirrors. Mm -hmm. Each micro mirror flips on the order of microseconds. Mm -hmm. So what we can do with each micro mirror, we can actually deliver four distinct pixels. Ad we call it addressable pixels. That means mm -hmm. we can not only get them on the screen, we can tell each pixel what color, what shade mm -hmm. of gray, what shade of color it should be. And we do actually display 8.3 million pixels on the screen, you know, meeting the 4K UHD standard. And, I, and people will always bring this up to me and it makes me laugh. It's like, okay, a DLP normally shows you one color at a time. It's moving so fast, it's showing you red, showing you green, showing you blue, and it's moving so fast, you see the full rainbow. If you can't tell, that that unit is only showing you one color at a time, how are you going to be able to tell that it's not, that that, that one mirror is also writing multiple pic, um, pixels at the same time? Because each mirror has to do not only multiple pixels, but also multiple colors of right. that pixel for each frame. And you see it all as this one beautiful, sharp looking image. I've worked for TIDLP for 15 years and it's still mind blowing mm -hmm. to me to think about how fast everything is happening. Mm -hmm. The micro mirror is flipping in sequence with the red, green, and blue illumination. Mm -hmm. uh, and guess what, it's getting even faster. So yeah. and our, our new controller can drive, the, mi the micro mirrors have been unleashed now with mm -hmm. our new uh, DLPC 8.4 series controller. Mm -hmm. You'll find those in new projectors like mm -hmm. the XGME Horizon 20 mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. This is going to enable faster frame rates, mm -hmm. faster color refresh rates, mm -hmm. uh, lower latency. The, the mirrors are really flying now. Yeah, because I'm starting to see projectors now that are going to support 4K at 120. That's coming next, mm -hmm. right? You're starting to see you know, 1080p at 240. You're starting to see um, input lag below one millisecond. So yeah, variable refresh rates. Support. Variable refresh rates. So the power, FreeSync certified. FreeSync <laughs> VRR. So, so, so the technology that's coming is 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 incredible. So what are some other interesting um, advancements that are that are happening? Yeah. So, so we talked about the new controller. That's that's a critical one. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about two new di uh, digital micro mirror pixel technologies that we've recently developed. Uh, the first one is a new 5.4 micron pixel design for high brightness levels, mm -hmm. higher brightness levels than ever seen before in consumer projectors. Mm -hmm. um, the the L, Hisense L9Q is the first in the United States to be released using this new pixel technology. Mm -hmm. We call it SST, mm -hmm. uh, stands for uh, Single Spring Tip Torsional, which mm -hmm. I know just rolls off rolls the top. We like to be technical <laughs> well, at I TI love the acronyms. and describe the <laughs> pixel architecture accurately. 
Uh, the SST is designed to be uh, more robust at higher brightness levels. So mm -hmm. 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, even 8,000 lumens mm -hmm. coming to your living room soon, whether that's in a uh, you know, a ceiling-mounted uh, projector or mm -hmm. a laser TV. Yeah, because I've noticed that, um, and that's one of the reasons, another the things I've noticed is the brightness has jumped. You know, a few years ago, 2,500 was amazing in a, in a in a home, and now you're seeing projectors that are reaching five, 6,000 lumens, uh, even up to 10,000 lumens, um, and it's there in very compact right. um, packaging. Now, a lot of times you think about that and say, wow, that's a lot of brightness for a home, well, when we were watching SDR material, yes, you didn't really need as much brightness. But when you, but to get the full brightness range of HDR material, or to utilize um, a projector in a room with um, under ambient light, and and still have the color look vibrant, having that extra brightness is is critical. And and it's making the projectors even more usable. Um, in, uh, in a wide range of environments and it's making HDR look a lot better. Yeah, for the first time, I'm frequently having to turn my projector down mm -hmm. because it's too bright. <laughs> yeah. There's literally a, a reason to have daytime and nighttime mode sometimes. Yeah. Um, now, some other things I've noticed is there's been some noticeable improvements in contrast as well. Yes. So is is that have to do with kind of the the, um, the imagery that's being used or the DMD that's it's being used? It's a combination used? of a few factors. So contrast is a, we call it a system level variable. It mm -hmm. depends on a variety of things. The, the digital micro mirror device mm -hmm. used, the micro mirror architecture, mm -hmm. the optical design, the mm -hmm. illumination used, mm -hmm. whether it's LED, laser, laser mm -hmm. phosphor. Mm -hmm. uh, main, you, you can mainly point it to, to two things. First of all, the new pixel architecture, mm -hmm. SST, is higher contrast, mm -hmm. all else equal mm -hmm. in, you know, in a particular optical design, it will mm -hmm. be higher contrast. Um, but the main driver is the use of direct laser illumination. Mm -hmm. Direct laser illumination fundamentally will result in higher contrast mm -hmm. than other illumination, illumination types like lamp or LED mm -hmm. uh, because of how uh, concentrated the light is. You mm -hmm. can really capture all the light onto the DMD mm -hmm. and control the uh, light spill. The light, yes, the light spill, and where you basically you direct the light where you want it to go, and not where you don't want it to go. Yeah. That's so basically, the, before you'd have a lamp, and then based on the position of the mirror, the, the mirror would either send the light from that lamp through the lens, mm -hmm. or kind of scatter it somewhere into the. So we call it a light dump. Yeah, dump yeah. it into the chassis black somewhere, absorbing right? Absorbing area. Um, and the better, the more, the steeper, the more the better you could do that, the more you can direct the light away from the lens and then the be and determine the black level, which in, which boosts the contrast. Yeah. So, you're, so you're more efficient at that. And then, it'll, But that's not just a chip, like you said, that's the optical blocks and, and everything else. So now if you want black, I can direct the light away from the lens and I can dim the light source at a rapid pace. That's, that's what I was going to mention. The RGB laser illumination also particularly enables this dynamic illumination control where mm -hmm. you know, in a dark scene you can dim the laser down, mm -hmm. uh, in a bright scene you can run it at 100% and you can do it quickly and precisely. So we, this, this, we call it dynamic black mm -hmm. in, in TI. Mm -hmm. This has been around for many years, mm -hmm. but at RGB laser is particularly good at it because yeah. of how fast you can yeah. control it and how precisely. So you're seeing you know, dynamic contrast levels, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've measured them in your reviews mm -hmm. or Ten thousand over ten thousand to one, mm -hmm. and the result is extremely effective. Now there are some growing pains. You see mm -hmm. some some yeah. jumping, some pumping, color and, yeah. color shifting, and I'm very sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. It's getting better and better all the time with support of TI mm -hmm. engineers working with our yeah. customers to really fine tune the software. Mm -hmm. So it's only going to get better from here. We're, yeah. we're at the early days of dynamic yeah. laser doing. And you're also seeing um, a lot more consumer projectors. Um, Besides the big pro, the big high-end models utilizing um, dynamic irises. Yeah. So when you combine dynamic iris, higher native contrast DMD, you um, upgraded optical blocks, upgraded laser systems, and then just better um, processing to utilize all those tools together is why you're getting these deeper blacks with better shadow detail, yeah. which people have been commenting on, on on a lot of products that utilize. At reasonable DMDs. price points. At very reasonable yeah. price points. At, You'd be, I, I'm shocked <laughs> at what you can get um, for from companies like um, Nexigo and Hisense and and um, Valerian and all of these products that, that are coming out that are delivering spectacular performance yeah. from DLP technology 
at very approachable prices. Not only do I work for TIDLP, I'm also a you know big projector geek. I love your site, and I'm I, you know, I upgrade my projector way. You know, my wife would say way too often, um, <laughs> like once or, every one or two years. And I've gone within five years. I've gone from a lamp-based mm -hmm. projector mm -hmm. that probably in ca color calibrated mm -hmm. mode was like a thousand lumens yeah. to LED mm -hmm. to RGB laser mm -hmm. and then like this next generation of RGB yeah. laser with dynamic iris and dimming and like the progress over the last five years in my home theater has gone from like I didn't really want to use it unless it was pitch black yeah do I want to use it all the time yeah <laughs> we saw we saw always call it bulb, bulb worthy you know you'd have to is this movie worth me wasting hours of my bulb so my the <laughs> cartoons from my kids wanted to watch or they want to watch Spongebob not on my projector yeah. but that kind of has has completely changed and the fact that um, because you make so many different sizes and variations they can be used in such so many different ways and you look at something like maybe a, a Samsung freestyle plus or something that's can, extremely compact that you can um, easily move from room to room or stick in a bedroom fire on a ceiling it's amazing the um, the amount of technology that that you can pack into such small packages because of the the type of imager that's being used yeah now and then you have to worry about bulb hours really with laser and LED the, the lifespans being so long so when my little kids want to watch Bluey or Gabby's <laughs> Dollhouse we can fire that up and I'm, I'm watching like wow the colors look amazing <laughs> yeah so so like I said I'm excited to see um, all of the the new technologies that are going to be coming down the line from from Texas Instruments when it comes to um, DLP DMD. I've got one more for you uh oh if you have it. yeah what the do you new, have the new the newest pixel technology which is our 4.5 micron pixel the smallest digital micro mirror we've ever designed mm -hmm. that just went into production last September of 2025. Mm -hmm. The first product to hit the market was released in China, and mm -hmm. uh, it was an XGME model. Mm -hmm. You're going to see it come here to the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty soon here, and some new projector models, and this will enable smaller, lower cost 4K projectors okay. than ever before. So imagine the, the models you think of now, mm -hmm. you mentioned these 1080p models mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. battery powered, mm -hmm. you can you know fit them in a backpack mm -hmm. and carry them around. Imagine those being 4K in the future. That's, okay. that's what we're trying to enable with the new Pixel. Okay, okay. so um, smaller, uh, more pic pix higher pixel density, which allows a smaller chip, which exactly. allows you to put 4K in even smaller devices. Yeah, it's a 0 0.39 inch diagonal 4K. Okay, excellent, excellent. If I want to find out more about um, um, DLP and DMD and Texas Instruments in general, where should I go? I'm glad you asked because we have a new website, uh, dlp.com. Um, we have all the information you need about DLP technology. We highlight new products and success stories. Uh, so please check that out. If you want to get into the technical nitty gritty, go to ti.com. Every single one of our, our DLP chips that are you know in projectors today, you can go look it up. Go look at data sheets if you want to really geek out. Yeah. Uh, we encourage that. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting. Like even DLP is utilized for printing and all sorts of different things that people are people just think that we're just mm -hmm. it's utilized for projectors, but but um, DMDs are utilized in a wide range of, of applications. So it's kind of cool to go to a website and see all those things. Yeah. All right. So Jesse, thank you for your time. Yeah. Anytime, Phil. And um, take care, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.